Coop's house. All right. So it usually takes until Friday for me to talk myself into winning the football game the following Saturday, but I might have gotten there a little bit early this week. You are Locked On Cougs, your daily podcast on the Houston Cougars, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to Locked on Cougs, daily podcast about your Houston Cougars. I'm your host, Houston-born teacher and coach, Parker Anchor, to break down all things Cougs. If you're a U of H fan or just a hater who came to step by, please be sure to subscribe down below. That way you can lay us on the Cougs in your news feed each and every day. We appreciate you making Locked on Cougs your first listen of the day. If you're finding us on YouTube, welcome back to the YouTube channel. It is so, so good to see you again. Remember, doing a giveaway every 250 subscribers. The next one is going to be at 1750. Uh, help us get there by hitting subscribe. Tell us you're in the contest by liking and commenting on the video. If after listening to me ramble what Houston needs to do to beat Central Florida this Saturday, you just are dumbfounded. You think that's just so smart. You just don't know what to talk about in your comment. Tell us who you think would make a it is a space race after all. Who do you think would make a good human ambassador for the aliens? Does it say that if in space you had to have one human being to meet those aliens, who would you send out? Now, today's episode is going to be a couple different things. One, we're talking about, obviously, all things Central Florida. Uh, we're going to look at three different things Houston has to do to win the football game. Now, obviously, some of these are easier said than done. But it looks very, very obvious that if you want to slow down Central Florida and get them in the last column, get Houston in that fifth win, these are things that you absolutely have got to, got to, got to, got to do. Now... The first one will be stopping the running back. The second one will be stopping the running quarterback. And the third one will be holding on to the football. Now, I know each of those seems very, very painfully obvious. But I want to talk down, I want to talk down the list here about what exactly goes into each. And I'll also talk about in relation to like how Houston does things, how I would do these things. right? So the first thing that Houston's got to do is slowing down the running back that's rj harvey harvey is a 5 8 195 pound very fast running back uh, he started his career off at uh, university of virginia he transferred after just one year there in 2019 to central florida he is originally from orlando um for what's worth that was like the pandemic he transferred there in 2020 that's the pandemic year you could see a lot of guys going home in that moment he's been very successful there, he did miss 2021 hurt. I can't tell based on stuff online. It's also not a UCF podcast if he actually has another year of eligibility after this or not. He's a very good running back, though. Um, he also will sometimes line up as a Wildcat back when they do Wildcat type stuff. He was a high school quarterback, uh, threw for a bunch of touchdowns, ran for a bunch of touchdowns, all kind of stuff in Orlando, Florida. He lines up in the slot a little bit. Uh, I, by my count, on uh, tallying up stuff on Pro Football Focus, because 18 times he's lined up at receiver positions this season. Um, so primarily in the backfield kind of guy. Really, really uh, th a big threat back there. He has 188 rushes for 1,172 yards and 16 rushing touchdowns. Um, I think what's interesting is that five eight a buck ninety five. You know that's a pretty stocky build. But he's got really great quickness and elusiveness. He's a really, really good zone scheme running back. That I say that once he puts his foot in the ground and gets upfield and declares a gap in those zone schemes, um, he he's really, really explosive through those holes. Um, that said, because he's got the stockier build, once he gets to that second and third level, he's really good at shaking off tacklers. He's averaging three and a half yards after contact this season, um, and he does prefer to get away from the big uglies in the middle. That means he's running off tackle and outside. Um, of his 1,172 yards, nearly 700 of them are coming from the tackle or further out on either side of the football. So he really does like those edges a lot. Um, you notice a lot about Central Florida's run game is to hit the edges. Um, they usually kind of use the up-the-gut kind of stuff just to keep you honest. It's a lot more of the off-tackle and further out kind of run game, uh, getting out into space with very, very fast athletes. Again, I mentioned he has the three-and-a-half yards after contact average he's missed made guys miss 54 tackles he is both stout and wiggly i think it's probably because of the low center of gravity and broad shoulders um 
I would also point out that he has those 188 carries in watching their offense. Um, he is the RPO guy in a lot of stuff as far as carrying out run fakes. And so he you know, is called probably to have more like 215 rushes on the season. But with the RPO stuff, they pull it and spit it out to whoever is running a slant, quick slant across the middle or a little spout around the outside or what they're reading defenses and taking the ball away from him in a way that, you know, he, he might actually have more carries if defense played them a little differently. Now, it's what Houston does. Um, I think this is an odd front kind of week. Uh, we'll talk more about that when we stop John Rice Plumley in the second segment. But I think this is an odd front kind of week for Houston where you see a lot more of that than the four down fronts. Houston's been kind of alternating with both fronts since the Texas game. Um, and I think that for a couple reasons. But one, I think that, that gets, you know, Jamari get isolated on a guard if they want to run the alpha tackle stuff or um, he'll be head up on a tackle if you want to put him a straight up four technique as well and kind of press that tackle backwards. Um, he does great with both of those kinds of things. Cedric Williams be obviously very good at this too. Um, we, and so I think that as you see that defense tackles Houston will put on the offensive tackles out there and kind of maintain and keep that that tackle area like true to form, meaning they'll keep the tackle box true to form um, and kind of hold ground there. And they like to run off of that tackle. So if you can penetrate that and push that further back by having a key, big, strong body at the point of attack there, that kind of creates a little, like the guy has to bubble to keep the ball outside and he very intuitively wants to run the ball outside. The other thing I think though that might be more important though is that puts those hang players for Houston's, the guys outside of that three-man front, they kind of you know, quasi linebacker, defensive end type guys, your Nelson Caesar and Del David Gwegbu, those guys are hanging out there in the space where a receiver or tight end has to block them. Good luck. Or they can be in the space for those kinds of runs. Now, what this does stress the defense is that those three defensive linemen have to control the interior gaps. But like I said, it seems like Central Florida runs to the interior gaps just to keep you honest. I would hope that, uh, you know, Traylon Payne, like Robinson, and the defense lineman in the middle could keep those, you know, contained to the best of their, you know, fairly well in those instances. Um, and I, I really do think that you want Caesar Nguegvu out outside the box, kind of in between. I would call it apex between the second receiver, tight end, and the box, because that's where the football is going to get forced a lot. And if you can penetrate with those defensive tackles at the office tackle spot and make it bounce outwards. Then he's running laterally. The running back is RJ Harvey uh, running laterally into those areas where you've got your best big body tacklers out there. Um, I also think it's worth pointing out that he has that many, you know, 54 missed tackles. He's forced 54 missed tackles, um, but he usually forced now a second and third level guys. Agwegbu and Caesar are both, really defensive lineman sized guys that have the athleticism play on the edge. Um, and so I think that that's not going to be a big time missed tackle, right? I think that that's the way that's going to go. Um, I think that's a, the three, three, five front is not necessarily my favorite in the big scheme of things, but certainly I think going to would work well in this particular game. I think it'll also work well in stopping and slowing down Jen Rice Plumley, which we'll talk about some in a moment, but First, we got to make sure that we talk about winning because it's time to win this Sunday. And if you want to win this week or weekend, you need to go to prizepicks.com to do it because at Prize Picks, they have the number one daily fantasy sports platform because of all the different ways you can combine uh, statistical analysis into winning money, right? So you think you know a lot about sports. You listen to me talk every day, you know a little bit about Houston sports anyway, right? And you can go there and Put your knowledge to the test by looking at stats and going overs or unders on individual statistics. And you can even parlay things across sports. You can be like, all right, Travis Kelsey, LeBron James, over, under, 10 and a half receptions and made threes. You're like, hey, LeBron shooting the ball really well this year. Travis Kelsey, Taylor Swift's going to be at the game. Let's go with that one. Boom, right? You go over. Uh, Travis Kelsey gets seven catches. LeBron makes four threes. You hit, you win. You do it at prizepicks.com. Use code uh, locked on college, L O C K E D. O N C O L L E G code locked on college, and they'll match your first deposit up to $100. They'll do this cool thing too, where if you uh, put a bet on a player and he gets injured, 
right? It gets into the first half, does not come back in the second. Then they'll reboot it. You don't lose anything. It'll reboot the player into your system. You got to keep on going without losing money. So go to prizepicks.com slash locked on college and use code locked on college, L O C K E D. L O C K E D O N C O L L E G E for a first deposit match of up to $100. That's prizepicks.com slash locked on college. Go win today. All right. So I mentioned the 335 is being effective stopping the running back run game. But I also think it's going to be really important in slowing down quarterback John Rice Plumley, quarterback at Central Florida. Um, this kid is electric to watch when you're studying film. He is just so fast. He is just so fast. Now he's listed at six foot, 200 pounds. I bet he's closer to 190. Uh, he's listed at six foot, 200 pounds. And he came out of high school with legitimate four, three speed. I'd imagine, frankly, he might be faster now. I, and I don't mean to say he's like a four, two, four kind of guy. I mean, like he is stronger now than he was as, as a high school kid. And it certainly does not look like he's lost a step. He is, an incredibly talented athlete. Houston's got to keep him in front of them. They've got to spy and contain him simultaneously. Um, and we'll talk about ways to do that in a moment, but this is a big guy that, like, frankly, was imposing to SEC defenses once upon a time. Now, he was at Ole Miss in 2019, 20, and 21. He's originally a state of Mississippi kid. Um, and in, at Ole Miss, he played in 29 games across those three seasons, but he was always like a gimmicky, rushing threat kind of quarterback. In his first season at, at Ole Miss, he had 1,000 yards and 12 touchdowns as a runner. I mean, since the get-go, he graduated high school with high-end, high, 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 high-end high Division One speed while being able to play Quarterback. Now he is a perimeter runner as well, right? He has a 29 of his 72 designed runs this season have been outside where a tight end would line up. So they don't even always run a tight end, but he's outside that wide. And again, that's 29 of his 72 design runs are out in that instance. The only other notable spot that pops up is the right A gap. Uh, that's a combination of both quarterback dives and sneaks. That's where, you know, the tush push kind of play. He likes, you know, that's where he likes to go when they run those kind of things. And if they ever give it to him on a gap scheme, power scheme kind of thing in the red zone, they run it to the right because it opens up RPO kind of stuff. And he goes right off that right A gap, right? So that's the only outlier outside of running the ball wide for John Rice Plumley. Um, he makes guys miss in a different kind of way than RJ Harvey. He makes them miss by making them look a little silly. He put one foot in the ground, gets you going one way and plants and, you know, burst back the other way in a way that, you know, again, is elusive high end four, three high end NFL wide receiver type of speed. He's really, really fast. Now, Houston can contain him. The deal is you've got to keep him in front of you. You got to make him run side to side. You got to make him, run into spots where you have help and you got to know where your vector points are. Like I'm coming at his right shoulder. You're coming at his left shoulder. We're not, I'm not going to, he's not going to, I'm going to miss if it goes this way. You're not going to miss if it goes that way kind of stuff, right? That's what you talk about a vice tackle. Uh, if you're coaching football on the decent side of it, right? Um, the way to do that to me, I mentioned this with the running back in the first segment is that three, three, five defense, but I also, especially on, like third and 17 plus because we've seen Houston give up so many of those like third and what was it? Baylor was third and 17. They gave up a 28 yard quarterback scramble. Like those kinds of plays will be touchdowns with this kid. You can't let them happen. Those kinds of mistakes just got to get taken out. Right. Like I, and frankly, they're like once every other game kind of things this year, maybe it's a little more often than that. Maybe it's twice out of every three games. They can't happen this week they just can't if you want to win the football game you cannot make those mistakes this week now if they don't make those mistakes uh the three through five defense again i mentioned i think will work really well because again talk about the beef defense tackle in the first segment that also applies to stopping john rice family you also have those big strong athlete athletic type guys in the weg boo and season right there in the hang spots uh that will also effectively you know, track the hip of John Rice Plumley. Um, the other thing with three three five is you're bringing in a third safety kind of guy, Hippolyte, Halsey, Gaston, 
Fleming, right? Guys with some speed, um, especially Gasson with some speed. I would prefer on basically anything outside of third and 15 to like spy the quarterback with AJ Halsey. Now hear me out. I know that's like Parker, that's your free safety. That's a lot. Um, but I think you can alternate coverage between going quarter, quarter, half, uh, with your two corners running quarters. And he has the middle half of the field. I think you'll run different variations of frankly, if you blitz, you might go cover zero every now and then, and those kinds of things. And it's not that John Rice Plumley is a bad passer, by any stretch of the imagination. I don't mean to say that he's not. Uh, on the season, he's got 1,800 passing yards. He's got 12 touchdowns and eight interceptions, right? It's that he is so much more impressive as a runner that if you can make him into a passer, I think you got to trust like, hey, we've taken away what he's best at. He's going to throw the ball up. Malik, go get it. Isaiah, go get it. Uh, you know, Brian George, go, go get it, right? He's gonna, if you can force him to make those kinds of plays, you have a chance because he's just that electric up front. The other thing about Halsey tracking the hip is Halsey, Caesar, a Gwegbuk will kind of create this like weird triangle, this triumvirate of sorts where a, in a 3-3-5, a Gwegbu and Caesar be kind of the hang players outside the box and Halsey be tracking it from that, behind them. And I weirdly feel comfortable saying, okay, Halsey has this middle portion of the field. He's coming downhill at it. Um, and then at the exterior portion of the field on the left side and the right side, you've got a Gweg Boo and Caesar. And if he gets outside those guys, that's when Halsey has been you know, on his horse, tracking it all the way back from the middle of the field and just can't get cut back on. I think that that's why I feel like so passionate. I feel strongly, I should say, right, that Halsey should be the guy spying the quarterback here in a 3-3-5 kind of system. Um Obviously, there'll be the plays you blitz. There'll be plays you stunt. There'll be plays you do other things to make sure you know you you know you take a risk here and you hope for the reward on it and those kinds of things. But as a base defense this week, I feel like you've got to track uh, John Rice Plumley with the uh, free safety. I was going to say strong safety because he hits like a strong safety with the free safety. Now I'll also say, like Houston's not quarterbacks of the game this year, right? We we saw Greg do do it to Quinn Ewers. I would never advocate to go out and like dirty hit somebody. That's not what I'm trying to say at all. But you do need to lay some hits onto Plumling, right? You do need to hit him and tackle him. Don't let him get away. Like get to him before he gets down to slide, right? I mean, don't mean dirty hit him. Not saying that, but get to him before he gets into a slide. Tackle him legally, often. Get after him. Get after him. Get after him. Um, and hopefully that wears him down as well, because while he is a strong runner, he has 72 designed runs this season. He's not a running back necessarily, right? And so I think getting after him those kinds of ways will be really important. And that's, again, Halsey, Caesar, Ugwebu, three of our biggest hitters on the team, creating that triangle of sorts to keep him in front, turning him hopefully into a passer. Now, I've talked a lot about what Houston's defense can do to win this game because I think Houston defense needs to step up. They're going to win this game. I think Houston defense has had a less than I would have wanted the year out of the, as a unit, and they could end the year on a high note this weekend. But the offense can help out some too. The offense needs to be able to hold on the football. We're going to talk about that some in the third segment. But the Offense is led by a brand new team member. And if you need to add people to your team in the same kind of way, like needing a starting quarterback and Houston went on got Donovan Smith, you need to go out to linkedin.com slash locked on college and check out LinkedIn jobs to add people to your team. Cause these days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. You'd be hundred percent certain you have access to the best quality candidates available. That's why I have to check out LinkedIn jobs and jobs that you find the right people to the right, uh, your team faster and for free again if you can find a starting quarterback kind of got to add to your team you got to do it at linkedin jobs and do it today linkedin jobs let you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster post chat for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college that's linkedin.com slash locked on college post chat for free terms and conditions apply all right so i mentioned a lot of things for the defense the offense has a duty in this game too and it's very, very obvious. They got to hold on the ball. And I know that seems obvious in any week. You don't have turnovers in any game. I get it. I get it. But in this game, Central Florida's defense 
isn't totally unlike any of the other newcomer defenses in the Big 12. Uh, it's not tremendous. I mean, it's it's got some good athletes on it. It's got a decent pass rusher here. And it, I don't mean to dismiss it as a unit or anything like that. But, 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 in their five wins, there's a noticeable difference for the UCF defense. On the year, Central Florida has 10 interceptions. On the year, they've got five forced fumbles, but they've only recovered four of them. In their five wins, they've got nine of those 14 total turnovers. Right? That's a very disproportionate number. They rely on getting the extra extra possessions because of how reliant they are in the run game and how like that will grind the clock and those kind of things. Now they had explosive plays against, against Oklahoma State, right? So it's not just the simple grind it out kind of stuff. But if Houston can hold on to the football, right, that already throws them into the dis and that you know disproportionate number. We're talking about nine of their 14 turnovers have happened in wins. Right, they were they need the ball those extra times. If Houston can hold on to the football, right, they're taking those extra possessions that the Central Florida offense relies on away. They simply are. And so if they can hold on to the football and avoid pick throwing interceptions and avoid fumbling the football, they give themselves a much better chance than in an average week, right? Um, guys look out for as far as you know, ball hawks for one Central Florida. Uh, Nakai Martinez is one of their two low safeties. Uh, he plays in the box some and the slot some. He rotates around a lot. He has three interceptions this season. He is their interception leader. Um, he occasionally and emotional will get bumped back to a free safety kind of spot, but truthfully, he's going to be down in the box. I bet he gets the Joseph Manjack assignment um, just because of how much Houston's used him since Matthew Gold went down and because he lines up a lot more often in the slot. And so you got the combination of factors there. I bet he, you know, in man to man coverage situations, will get Joseph Manjack or get to that side of the field for sure. Um, so, Probably want to try and throw away from him. If you're going to throw the man jack when he's on him, try and run some sort of a rub route, right? Get him off of him. Uh, those kinds of things. The other guy to keep an eye out for once they get the ball in the, in the you know, catch the ball downfield is Damari Henderson. Um, he's the other low safety, right? They have kind of a similar defense. So what I'm talking about here with it, the, they have uh, five defense backs on the field at one time. They kind of run a four. It's kind of a four, two, five, but the two are kind of in between guys. But, um, one of their four is also not really a lineman. It's a different, it's a funky defense. But they have five defense backs in the field at one time. They have two low safeties. Damar Henderson is the other low safety from Nakai Martinez. Um, he has two of their five forced fumbles, both of which were recovered by the defense. Um, he is going for the football, right? He is striking for the football. He is like swatting down on the tack for the football in the very dramatic ways. Um, so I would, you know, obviously if you get catch the ball as a Houston Cougar moving downfield, make sure, especially if you're on his side of the field, but just in general, protect the football, cover up the football, because we know Central Florida is going to want to knock it out because their offense needs those extra possessions. The thing that scares me about this one is I don't think Houston, can, it's not that Houston can't hold on to it. Frankly, it's not been a terrible year as far as fumbles have gone for Houston. Um, but, 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 I, and I've, been pro Donovan Smith, uh, I think more so than others. Although I will say, um, you know, he's had good games. He's had bad games. He's had great moments. He's had bad moments. Um, but since the West Virginia game, the Hail Mary at the end of West Virginia, since that game, he's had an interception or more every week. He had one against Texas. He had one against Kansas State. Two versus Baylor, three versus Cincinnati, and two versus Ohio State. Now, I understand that some of those are not his fault. Some of those are tip balls that the receiver should have caught. Um, there's one that the receiver fell down and hit the guy in the helmet, right? Like, I get that aspect of it. I'm not saying that every interception is 100% of the quarterback's fault. I also get that some of his interceptions are he's getting hit as he throws because he doesn't have the same time as other quarterbacks do. I, I get that, too. I'm not, like, dismissing other factors here. But, in general, that's way too many interceptions. Just at the end of the day, it just is. And those are the kinds of interceptions that Central Florida needs to have to win football games. 
and frankly, Houston, if they want to win this football game, cannot have. I think they keep those things clean. They got a really great shot, right? Central Florida does have those gamblers on defense, but that also means that there's space behind them to go score, right? Um, frankly, up front, this kind of game where my man Parker Jenkins should have like 15 carries, right? Like this is going to be one of those kinds of days if it works in Houston's favor. And I understand that this has not been the kind of season anyone, myself included, wanted all summer long. I talked about like I'm higher on this team than national audiences, and here's why. I will say that there's a real chance this this Saturday. And again, they got to stop RJ Harvey. They got to contain John Rice Plumley, and they got to hold on to the football. But man, if they can do those three things, they really really should have a chance, a good chance to, to steal this one on the road, play spoiler, start a space race rivalry, do all of those things to Central Florida. Now, if you think I'm missing something or you think I'm just a crazy person, tell me in the comments down below. Bring it on. Uh, you can also find me on all sorts of social media. I'm at Painsworth512, P-A-I-N-S-W-R-T-H-512 on every social media platform you look for. Uh, Locked on Cougs is a primary Locked on Podcast Network, and we appreciate you making us your first listen of the day Heads up, today is Wednesday. Tomorrow is Turkey Day. Happy Thanksgiving. Um, no episode will be out tomorrow. We'll have an episode out Friday uh, with a Central Florida guest to talk about Central Florida as well. We also might do a short bonus piece of content out Friday because Houston does have a basketball game against Montana on Friday night. So I might do a shorter bonus piece to preview that one but there will not be an episode out tomorrow it's thanksgiving shouldn't be listening to me talking anyway should be going out enjoying our family and some good fa- get some good football and some good food all day on thursday um thank you all so much for being locked on kooks your first listen of the day for a second listen go listen to locked on big 12 drake's doing a great job covering the whole conference over there locked on kooks probably locked on podcast where them is your team every day go kooks